And what a lovely morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've good talked a whole night through. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And we wish you a good morning. It is a Monday morning. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth. Good morning, Melody. Happy Monday. And good morning to you. <laughs> good morning to the listeners. Good morning, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Snowing here. <laughs> uh, we get that tomorrow, so. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's winter. It's surprising. I know. We're getting I know. Snow. Everybody complains. I was complaining. You know, we had that couple of days where we had 50 and 60 degree weather, and then it turns off into the zeros and below, and everybody's complaining. They go, hey, you realize it is still January. It is still January. <laughs> the only time I complain is if I get a foot of snow, I'm snowed in, I can't get out, or with hurricanes or tornadoes, or I have those, I, those scare me. Those yeah. scare me. And, uh, so you're not, a, you're not really in tornado. Oh, you'd be surprised how many, you, you'd be surprised how many tornado warnings we've had since I've been here. <laughs> Which you brought them with you? I brought them with me. I mean, it's like there's tornadoes everywhere anymore. It's kind of like those sci-fi movies you see. You know, at the end of the world, there's tornadoes popping up everywhere across this country, and you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe there's uh, something to it, but. Just yes. hang on to your little doggy, Dorothy. Hang Just hang on. on to your little doggy. <laughs> I'm going to go get some red blingy shoes so I can always get home. So Click the heels together. Yes. We had the power all along. I wrote an article about that. We had the power all along. We, the people, have the power to change things if we just do it. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. I mean, we do. And, you know, that Absolutely. was Absolutely. Always- that was always, you know, there's uh, millions of us and, you know, a couple hundred of them, you know, well, more than a couple hundred, but. Um, 545. So, mm-hmm. So, you know, but I started thinking about a lot of strange things this morning. I don't know why. This article fired me up. Uh-oh. And I started thinking about Davos and I started thinking about, you know, the, you know, everybody and even I was impressed with his speech and, you know, opening up America and so forth, bringing home, you know, and, and, but, you know, America first, but not alone. And I'm just, you know, this morning I woke up and it's really sad that that's almost the first thing on my mind. (laughs) And I just didn't feel good about it any longer. I'm thinking to myself, we're so focused on building a wall. We're so focused on keeping out the illegals that we do tax reform to where we repatriate trillions of dollars back into this country with no vetting. We don't know whose money it is, what money it is, what money, I mean, just... Hey, we're, 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 this is a one-time deal for you, so any type of money can come back into this country. Um, and it's almost if we're open for business, it's like there's going to be no vetting. And when we talk about infrastructure, is the infrastructure rebuilding going to be for us, the citizens, or is it going to be infrastructure rebuilding for those that are <laughs> – Pardon? For the dons, so oh, the dons, the rich people. Well, no, I mean for the for the multinational corporations. corporations. Yeah, you can say that too. But you know, or, or is that? And the reason I think that now this is out of Axios, and the national security officials, Trump's national security officials, are considering an unprecedented federal takeover of a portion of the nation's mobile network to guard against China. Why it matters, and this is from the report. Um, it, we got our hands on a, I guess, Axios. This was produced by a senior National Security Council official. Um, it's basically saying America needs to centralize a 5G network within three years um, where the U.S. government would pay for and build the single network. Now, they're talking about nationalization, which would be an unprecedented nationalization of historically private infrastructure. 
Now these are wireless providers, an alternative plan where wireless providers build their own 5G networks that compete with one another, though the document says the downside is it would take longer and cost more. It argues that one of the pros of that plan is that it would cause less commercial disruption to the wireless industry than the government building a network. Uh, the, the article goes on. Between the lines, a source that is familiar with the document's drafting says there's option two is really no option at all. A single centralized network is what's required to protect America against China and other bad actors. So again, here here is the pitch to protect America against the big bad boogeyman China and other bad actors. So do we nationalize our wireless abilities in the name of security, in the name of, you know, against China. But it seems to me, and anything that is quote unquote nationalized is not a good thing. <laughs> you know, um, they compare it to Eisenhower's national highway system. Um, it would lead to federal control of a part of the economy that today is largely controlled by private wireless providers. In this memo, the Trump administration likens it to the 21st century equivalent of the Eisenhower National Highway System and says it would create a new paradigm for the wireless industry by the end of Trump's current term. The proposal to nationalize a 5G network also only covers one part of the airwaves. There'd be other spaces where private companies could build. This uh, presentation says that the U.S. has to build super-fast 5G wireless technology quickly because China has achieved a dominant position in the manufacture and operation of network infrastructure. And China is the dominant malicious actor in the information domain. To illustrate the current state of U.S. wireless networks, uh, this presentation, you know, and then they talk about, you know, it's, they're just describing this presentation picture-wise. So the best uh, this memo argues is for the government to build a network itself. It would then rent access to carriers like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And, and I'm thinking to myself, this can't be good. <laughs> no. This can't be good. Now, I get it. This is just in a presentation. But, I mean, that's where all things begin. And, you know, and this is why I started thinking, you know, while we're being focused on the building a wall, you know, our country is being gutted for the sake of an economy and no one is the wiser. Um, and we don't care who comes in to build manufacturing. We don't care who comes in oh they're legal but they come in and you know we're going to be our country is being used for collateral and already has been for the yeah. amount of debt that we carry um we're ushering in a uh, so there is no is it really america first um and to what extent you know, that's one thing that always bothered me about America first, being first, make America great again. Um, it was never really defined. It was never True. really defined. Because we're already the greatest country. Yeah, we got trade issues. We've got, you know, debt issues. That's what's bringing us down is the debt. Exactly. So, you know, so how do we? make America quote-unquote great again by closing one border to illegals and opening it up um, to those that, you know, all for the sake of the economy. I mean, then if, if it's all for the sake of the economy, and everybody knows this, this country anymore, it's not a country, it's an economy. I mean, what have we lost well, and I said whenever we were having the campaign, you know, when they talked about uh, the president, <clears throat> you know, Donald Trump being a businessman, I thought, well, as long as we got it incorporated, we might as well run it like a business and get it out of the red, you know, get it out of the red and put it back in the black. 
And uh, but that's impossible was, to do. Well, I understand that. I was just saying that everybody, those who were complaining that he was a businessman, not a politician. Well, I don't like politicians too much myself. But um, um, and and you even said, you know, if when things collapse. If it happens during his watch, it's better during Donald Trump's watch than it would be if Hillary Clinton had been elected, or even Bernie Sanders. And had Hillary not fixed it, Billy, um, Bernie Sanders probably would have been elected. Very likely. If what? If Hillary hadn't fixed the... Uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I have no doubt about that. Because you would have had every college student in the... You know, yeah. I mean, it would... Uh, because I don't think they... As much as they want to, uh, we're already a socialist country, basically. So there couldn't be much argument against it. <laughs> I mean, they, they have a pretty hard, you know, way to uh, defend against that argument. And most people, when they want something free, they're not going to hear anything anyway. So it's, um, I mean, yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it, 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 and. I don't know. It was just bugging me this morning. I guess I saw some uh, reports this morning, and uh, uh, you know, it was just troublesome. I guess Netflix is doing a series on Follow the Money, and it's not all about Trump. It's 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 about the corruption and and so forth. But he is in. You know, they of course play tribute to him in one of the segments. I mean, I don't think they could, uh, you know, and I think this is just what made me begin, and not that I'm a fan of Netflix and so forth, and, you know, their documentaries, of course, are all going to be slanted. I get that. You know, so when I hear these things, I listen with, you know, an open eye, open ears, and and so forth. So, um, but some of the things, and it just made me start thinking about where are we. I mean, just like the tax cuts, the tax reform. Why would they? Why would these things be done now, if we were in such great shape? Why wouldn't you? You know, you, you always want to hold that. <laughs> you always want to hold something behind you to pull it out when needed. <laughs> um, and it's like we're 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 using all our leverage. We're using all our uh, everything we have, and I'm thinking why. To me, that tells me that's how desperate. So, what is going to be used when, when the, when it hits the fan? We don't, we don't have anything left. We've had dec, we had a decade of, or more of, uh, uh, of extremely low rates, free money for the world. And mm. it, it, there, there isn't anything left. Mm. You know, to keep the system going so anyway I, I just uh you know and then when i come up then i see this thing about nationalizing you know the uh airwaves and bands and so forth and it just uh the 5g network it's just like you know and yes this is just in its discussion point and and you know just uh but it's a thought and it's a direction and they're using security as the main and we all want to be protected i mean that's how they get that's how they get things done you know they have to they have to create the big bad boogeyman um in order to just pitch and sell their deal so i was very uncomfortable with that and i think you're going to see more of these things come this way if if the the pitch to bring multinational corporations back into this country and i agree we should have manufacturing don't get me wrong I'd like to see better quality jobs, but I'm also a realist. Let's look at the reality of things, folks. Um, you know, we can talk about what we want it to be and how it should be, but let's look at the reality of it. And um, I don't know how much time we have. I see we have a caller. Well, so. uh, we should have the music. Music should be going. I there it is. <laughs> We're going to give out the number, 717-300-1218 is the number to call. 717-300-1218. You're listening New to New callers. Talk. New callers. New, ca new callers, please. 717 300 Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. You just give us a call. We're just sitting here having coffee together. And uh, Melody and Beth Ann with Power Talks will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. 
Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned to listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. Melody went on a tear. She said, we don't have to have news. I'm on a tear. <laughs> uh, now someone's going to tear into me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, we do have the, the infamous uh, uh, speech coming up tomorrow night. What do you expect out of that? I think you're going to hear a lot of what we've heard before. Um, I think we're going to hear... You know, what he's done, what he wants. I mean, that's where it should be. I mean, that's what they all do, and that's how they're all structured, is, you know, he's going to say, this is, you know, what we've done, this is what I promised, and this is what we're going to do. And, um, you know, I don't don't think you're going to hear anything. I think he'll probably get in a few hits and so forth uh, um, to the liberals. And uh, But other than that, I I don't think it's going to be... I don't think there's going to be any surprises. I think he'll follow the script. He'll follow the teleprompters. And um, I, th- I think it'll be, you know, he'll he'll carry it off well. Do you? I think, yeah, I think he will, too. I think he's going to I think he's going to push bipartisan and looking forward instead of staying where we are. We have been chasing all these distractions for so long, and it's just disgusting to me. And, you know, I um I believe there's a lot of corruption, and I don't know how we're ever going to clean it up. One president's not going to clean it up. I do think he's trying, but one president cannot clean it up, and uh, uh, it's going to take the people. You know, we'd mentioned, uh, I think before we went on the air, that that's really the only way and the only solution for this nation, and that's for us to, we the people, to wake up locally and start cleaning it up at home. 
You know, you got to start there and then move it on up. And uh, we've got to hold these people accountable. We certainly do, and that has always been the problem. No one's held accountable. No one goes to jail for the things that they've been caught doing. They get smacked on their fingers. They, you know, they 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 pay a you know pittance, yeah. uh, fines. And, you know, it's business as usual, you know, and, and their message is, you know, do what you do. You can be as corrupt as you want and uh, just don't get caught. <laughs> if you do, make sure you have a separate account. I mean, already. I mean, if there truly was a slush fund for these politicians to pay to keep people quiet, um, you know, no one's paying any attention to that. Did you all? Did you? Anybody really notice how the the sexual harassments just kind of went out the window? There's no one. Oh, it was only those four people in in, in D.C. that got caught and, and do what they do. Um, and there's you know there was millions of dollars spent as hush money. Who's following up on it? Yeah. Who, where's the investigation being called and all of by a sudden, Jeff Sessions? And all the memo comes out, you know, re- release the memo, release the memo. What did you know? And I did not know this. I saw something last weekend. I mean, last Friday, I think it was, after the shows, where um, Nikki Haley had come out defending herself. I guess this Michael Wolf in his book, you know, Fast and, not Fast and Furious, I'm sorry, that was another thing, Fire and Fury, I guess he got on uh, Bill Mars, and he was claiming that he knew without a shadow of a doubt or whatever that Haley and and, and President Donald Trump had had an affair. Oh, good grief. <laughs> and she's out there to defend. I'm thinking, when did she have time to have an affair? <laughs> she's been one busy lady. <laughs> and she's defending herself and saying this guy's a nut. And, you know, his book was all big talk for about, what, two weeks? And then you haven't heard any more about that. Except last night on the Grammys. Oh. <laughs> I didn't watch the Grammys. I don't either. I just saw the reports this morning. As uh, <laughs> you know, that, you know that it, for them, it, you know, they're no different than the football teams making a political statement. There's no need for it. If they want to make a political statement, let them do it on their own time, not during their little awards programs and so forth, where they just pat each other on the back, saying "good job," and you know, where most most of them don't even have talent worth even recognizing. <laughs> yet they get paid billion, millions of dollars. And uh, then tell us how to live. Yeah, and then tell us how they, to live. So, you know, have go, have your little award, go have your little award programs. Go pat yourselves on the back. Job well done. But keep politics out of it. If you want to be political, do it on your own time. Good grief. <laughs> 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 but Joy Villa, she did not wear black. No, she did. Did you see what she was wearing? I just yes, saw that did. this morning. I didn't. I thought it was a I great statement. Well, she she's a, she's a uh, she's a conservative in Hollywood, and they have really gone at her and another young woman that uh, that supported Donald Trump for president. And uh, anyway, she wore a pro life dress, and she had white, and then she had. It was all in like color on the one on um, the skirt was full, and on the one side it was uh, a picture of a baby with inside the womb, like a net ultrasound pic, you know, inside. I didn't I didn't think it was I didn't think it was well done, but it was a statement. <laughs> she was making a statement. She wore a white dress, and she was and it was pro life, uh, and she had choose life on some other part on of it. Her, I can't remember. On her handbag. It was cheap. That's life. it. You're right. That's right. It was. So, you know, she's not afraid to make a statement. And, you know, that's pretty brave because uh, she uh, she's definitely in the minority there in Hollywood. And there's quite a few of them that, uh, They're afraid you know, to say are, anything. Are, that are, <laughs> uh, well, you know, hey, you know what? Because they get blackballed. And I know. That's what I mean. they, they made a decision, you know, so... You know, they made a decision on uh, uh, what they choose to to live and work within the the realm of you know corruption and you know I could make call names, but I'm not going to, or make a statement and let everybody know exactly. And I mean, look, it wasn't it Scott Bio or Bayo, however you pronounce his last name. He he comes across. He was on, uh, I, I believe, with him. That is a Christian 
yes. man and, and so forth, and now he's being accused of uh, sexual harassment during one yeah, of his he, he sitcoms. Seems to have, he seems to have proof that it didn't happen. But anyway, we have a caller. We have Ari from Utah. Did I say your name right? Yes, that's right. All right. How are you today? Thank you for calling. I'm fine. Yes, uh, first time I've listened to your show, uh, to you two ladies together, but I've been listening to Melody, Melody on the Financial Survival Show for quite some time. And Thank I you. Had a quick, yes, I'm um, really impressed with your mental intellect, astuteness, and your discernment, and uh, really, uh, really feel real good about uh, what I hear from your show. Uh, I just, I have a question concerning. Uh, the dollar and uh, China's economy uh, in regards to their uh, where they just recently have gone to the gold back yuan. And I've been following the markets. Uh, short, uh, oh, I don't know, in the last month or two, I've been noticing within about the last four to six weeks that the dollar has been on a decline. And uh, so we've heard reports, uh, different schools of thought in regards to China being a big bubble. Uh, they're going to burst. They're going to collapse. And then, uh, like Peter Schiff says the other way, that uh, he thinks they're uh, a lot stronger and more stable than uh, uh, some people would say. So, Mike, I want to know what you have to say in regards to uh, the Chinese gold back yuan. How strong is that? How uh uh, do you think that they're a legitimate competitor in world domination in the world's in markets and economy? And do you think that that has a significant influence in regards to the dollar's uh, decline? I think what we're experiencing right now globally is synchronized manipulations of economies. I think... China, no one knows. You could debate both sides. You could debate that they're stronger. You could debate that they're weaker. I don't believe China ever would tell the truth. I read an article about China many, many years ago. It was written back in the late 20s, early 30s, somewhere during the Depressionary time. And they broke China down. And it was always, you know, China will always be your friend to you. But behind the scenes, the, you're not. You will think that they are your friend. And I think we're, we see this. We've seen China go into various countries. We've seen them go into Africa. They're there to help. Um, they have an incredible amount of debt. And they hold a credible amount of our debt. And I truly believe at this point in time, we, I, maybe we're at a time where we have this beast that truly is controlling everything i mean as far as the weaker dollar hey if you go back to the simple fundamentals when you have a fiat currency your currency will continue to get weaker you will have higher inflation that's a fundamental of of a fiat currency so is it is it because the 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 the, the monetary policy is beginning to not work anymore, that we're beginning to experience a, a weaker dollar? Um, is it the manipulation of other currencies, of our own currency? You can't tell me when Mnuchin in Davos last week said that we want and we look forward to a weaker currency. That was not by design. It was meant to do something, and it did it. So I think we're just in a place where we can debate on what's causing what, what's causing this, and that just keeps us away from the true fundamentals, which are a heck of a lot scarier than trying to debate which is really affecting this and, 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 and that. I think everything is affecting everything to some degree, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, real quick, I don't know if uh... – I'm sure you probably are very, very familiar with The Economist magazine. I was listening to a radio show, I don't know, it was probably a good two and a half years ago. I don't remember which one it was. But they brought up The Economist magazine, who I hear it's probably controlled by the Rothschilds. I don't know if that's true or not. 
But anyways, they were mentioning a really old article in The Economist magazine all the way back. Oh, shoot. I think it, it was in the 80s. Way back in the 80s. It wasn't 80s, that long ago. <laughs> but anyways, the cover of The Economist magazine had the date 2018 on it with a uh, – what is that bird? Uh, it's uh, With the phoenix bird and then uh, something about uh, a new currency coming on board in 2018. Have you ever heard anything about that? Yeah, I heard. I heard about that. And, you know – They've been, you know, you hear discussions and, and predictions of new currencies um, coming on board. We had the Amero back, you know, when things were getting heated up in right. 2008, 9, 10. And, I mean, there were designs. There was even, you know, copper or, bron or, or you know, I don't know, various coins that were actually, you know what? No one really knows when all this is going to happen. Or how. or how. I think the elite are playing this. You know, and, and I was talking about that um, that Netflix thing this morning, and it, it kind of made sense with with Mr. Trump. He he's he's made a lot of money, but he never really had the power. And now he has the power. Where a lot of these multinational corporations, you look at Soros and all of these guys, they had this, they have the money, but they also had power. And so, you know, I stick to fundamentals and I know what's real because there's so much mistruths, misrepresentations, sensationalisms. Deception. And, pardon? Deception. Deception yeah. that has you know, people view as truth. Right. And the only thing that you can look to are the fundamentals. And that's why, you know, it's just like, yeah, I don't sound that exciting, you know, when I talk about gold and silver and, and you know, how it protects your purchasing power. It's a lot more exciting to say, hey, you know, silver's going to go to 1,000, gold's going to go to 50,000, and everybody needs it and so forth. Why not? That, that might be true, but to me that's just gravy. You know, that's the benefits of owning gold and silver. They play a much more bigger part, and the fundamentals of that is what supports it. There isn't anything else that supports any of this stuff. So well, I, 2018 is going to be an interesting year. Yeah. I completely agree with what you said about China. They're very, very secretive behind closed doors at the very top. And when need be, they can be quite clever and deceptive. But uh, so, in other words, the jury's still out, and we just basically just have to wait and see. What I think is going to happen to China is, I think what we're experiencing. I've said this before. We're experiencing countries that are positioning themselves because they want the biggest piece of the pie. Uh, we have bought trinkets from China, and this was all by design. This is all by design. It's no surprise. We bought trinkets from China. We exported our inflation. People kept buying their trinkets. They took that money from us and basically made us beholden to them by buying our debt. They've increased their military. Um, I mean, China is no longer the little third world country that we picture, I think. No, they're not. No. no. And... Um, powerful they will pass us economically so i mean i was reading an article this morning in fact it's in our it's going to be in financial survival doug nolan i, I support doug nolan and all his articles because to me he i believe what he says that this world is in a bubble and he doesn't use sensationalism he uses facts what do you, what do you, this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's all right. What about uh, what? Do you, what's your uh, what are your feelings about uh, Peter Schiff? I think I'm not a fan of his investment advice, but I think Peter Schiff understands, and I be, I don't have to be a fan of their investment advice, but I. 
I think if he can wake anyone up, more power to him. If he can help people, now I know he puts a lot of people in paper. I know I'm not a fan of the uh, of his gold programs uh, where you store offshore. Um, you know, so those issues I'm not a fan of. But what about uh, you know, uh, he's... pardon. Okay, I'm sorry. There's a guy that has a website. I forget his name. It's called GoldenJackass.com. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I do. Are you going to ask uh, me about think... him, too? <laughs> yes. Do you mind? I'm going to say this about everyone. Okay. If they're not providing people with what I believe is important to own gold and silver and more than 5 or 10% of your assets in gold, I don't agree totally with great. their... I don't agree with their investment philosophies, okay. but there are. But some of them have insights that are wonderful. They write well, and they do a great job. That doesn't mean I have to agree with their investment philosophies. Okay. And that's pretty much. Again, if they're pitching five or ten percent of physical assets in gold, that's not my cup of tea because I believe people have to have more than 5 or 10% of physical delivery of gold. I'm not a fan of storage of overseas. I'm not a fan of, of uh, online gold accounts. I'm not a fan of, I believe, again, the simple fundamentals of gold and silver. You buy, you take physical delivery, period. Right, exactly. If, if, if people have IRAs and they don't want to take physical delivery, there are physical uh, gold and silver uh, IRAs. They are stored at a depository. That's an option. I get that. But people need to have more than 5 or 10% of gold and silver in their portfolios. Or to me, what's the point? And I'm talking okay. about and I'm talking about retirement accounts. I'm talking about savings, pensions. You know, you know the the the, the big money. Five or ten isn't going to protect you. Okay, thank you, Melody. I appreciate uh, your insight, and uh, you have a reputation of being quite honest and transparent. And uh, I'll continue to listen to your radio shows. And uh, you two ladies have a nice day. Thank well, you, Aries. Appreciate the call. Thank you for calling. Good conversation. Good questions. I yes. sat back and listened. I felt like I was resting today. <laughs> well, then you can take over now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're on a roll, and I like it when you get on a roll. <laughs> no, I always get myself in trouble. <laughs> no, you do not. No, you do not. Screw you shows out your your wisdom and and experience. Your twenty plus years in in um, in the business, so to speak, with the gold and silver. You've been studying the markets. You've been studying the economy. You've been watching what's happening around the world, and, and uh, uh, you share that, and that's, that's people feel the realness, you know. They, they do understand that, Melody, that yeah, you're well, honest and real. Thank, well, thank you very much. And, but I don't change much unless there's a true reason to change my, my views. Because I do believe that, you know, the fundamentals is the truth. Truth doesn't change. No, it and doesn't. It doesn't change. And so, you know, you and I hear a lot of change. People change from this. They adapt to this. They change that. They tr and it even comes back to investing with gold and silver. You know, you, you want to trade this. You want to trade that. No, 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 no. There's times you might want to trade. Depending on what you've previously purchased uh, in the past, maybe you were dealing with somebody that gave you some, you know, their view, their opinion, differs from mine, that's okay, but let me show you a better way. And so I don't change much from, you know, having 80% gold in your portfolio, 20% silver. I don't change from it's really the suitability of each, of each investor into gold and silver to help determine that 80-20. It might be 50-50. That can change 
in your gold and silver holdings. I have clients that are 100% in silver. I have clients that are 100% in gold. I have clients that are 80 and 20. But it's my job to help my clients to make that informed decision. Um, so if someone says to me, Melody, I have this amount and um, help me with it. I, I trust what you say. I'm going to go 80-20 because I believe that's what's necessary to protect people's purchasing power. But it's the suitability. It's the suitability of, the, of a person and what they have to invest, whether that is good for them or not. Maybe it isn't. So, again, this, it's, there is no, you know, you have to be flexible in, in when you're making decisions. And it's just not gold and silver decisions. It's for those of you who have paper investments in your, your retirement accounts and so forth. You just go along with the program and let these financial planners manage your money. That irritates me so much. You pay people a couple percentage a year or more to manage your money. I, I, I just, um, it works because if there's a mistake and it goes down, then you have someone to blame other than yourself. And um, so, and it's okay because no one does a 100% job. People could do a much better job managing their own money than paying someone else to do it. You can mm. do just as good of job. And um, so, anyway, <laughs> remember, <laughs> folks, you control your money. It's your money. So Absolutely. well, actually, Absolutely. you don't have you don't have money until you have gold and silver. <laughs> that's, that's another program. Ready to throw that in there. <laughs> You're listening to Power Talks. Your calls are welcome at eight at seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen. That's seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen. You can give Melody a call in the office. At 1-800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. Melody and Beth Ann will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network, there's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for His holy nation, 
the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. As we have returned, you're listening to Power Talks. We're in the final segment of this Monday show. We have Brett from Ohio. Brett, how are you today? No, that's Brad. Oh, Brad, I'm sorry. Uh, that's How's okay. Today, Brad? We're anyway, going to blame the producer. <laughs> no, nah, it, it, it's not his fault. A, a lot of people call me Fred. <laughs> anyway, my uh, thing was, do you remember the story that broke out of Panama? Years, mm-hmm. about three, About three or four years ago, maybe? Yep. And they had all these here names of those people with offshore accounts. Yes. Okay. Well, anyway, we never did get them names, and that was a really hot story at the time. And what I wanted to talk to you about was I heard a pastor one time talk, and this pastor was, uh, he was out of South Carolina, and his story was, is he needed money. And the easiest thing that he could do uh, that God could do for him would be give him money. Well, anyway, he said, in this world, there's uh, about a hundred men of real wealth. And then is uh, going, going. You're breaking up. Yeah, I think we're having trouble with your phone line. Up, we lost yep, him. I think we lost, we lost him. him. I'm not was, sure. I'm not sure what question that he was leading to. Um, but yeah, there was a big deal about Panama a couple of years ago, where there was, you know, you know, accounts hiding money and so forth. And you know, you never get to the bottom of, of anything. It's like it's reported, and you know, that's it. And no one ever follows up and so forth. And as far as a hundred real uh, people who control this earth, I'm assuming that's where he was heading with the amount of wealth. I worked with. Uh, I had friends. Uh, they were church uh, friends in Missouri when I was in Warsaw, the Warsaw Christian Church, and they lived in. Um, he was actually a. Um, before any messages, uh, when he was in the service, any messages that went in and out of the White House, they. I can't think of the proper term that he used for his position, but it was. Uh, um, they they listened to. They they analyzed it, um, in and out. Uh, and um, uh, he had a lot of stories, and he told me one time, and I've shared this story on the air before, he had a manuscript. He did a manuscript, and he asked me one day, he says, how many people do you really think controls this world? <laughs> well, he didn't know how much I knew, so, you know, I always answer a question with a question. <laughs> well, what do you think? And he says, well, he says there's a handful of people. He says there's a handful of people that control the world. And we never talked politics. You know, he was the, they were, him and his wife were Christian friends, very good Christian friends. Uh, we met at the church and, you know, so you, you, you have a different type of relationship. Politics rarely came into play, but every once in a while, you know, if the minister would uh, br- have a topic, uh, um, you know, we'd talk about it. But uh, when he passed on, he wasn't going to do his manuscript. He wasn't going to print his manuscript. He was going to give it to his, um, nephew and allow them to decide what they wanted to do with it and uh, so I never really heard what happened I moved away and uh, you know did you say say Versailles did you say that was in Versailles no Warsaw oh Warsaw okay Warsaw Warsaw Warsaw, Missouri and um, so but it was interesting that uh, you know he said there was a handful of people that truly rule the world and uh, and I I agree with them Um, we're just a little uh, just Little pawns in there, little, little puppets play. and pawns, and and they play chess and so forth. And uh, you know, we'd like to think we have a part playing, and we do. We make decisions on a daily basis regarding our lives, and you know, the decisions we make, um, you know, affects 
us, our families, those around us, and, you know, how we do business. And, you know, and so, I mean, we do play a part, but uh, um, but the big things in, in, in life, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. But, uh, very interesting, very interesting. And, and uh, you know, when you stop and think about that, when it's just a handful, even if it's a hundred, that's a big handful, um, that's very small in the big scheme of the world, of how many countries, how many leaders, how many governments, but just a small handful of, of, of those that hold the wealth. So, anyway, so, you know, to... You know, sorry we lost your call. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, call back. So um, what's next, Beth? Well, I don't know what's next. You know, we, we talk about all the politics, and I know I'm real bad about that, talking about the politics and of things that are going on. And, and uh, you know, my, my fear is that, that the people in this country, particularly, they're the ones I'm concerned about, really, have have lost perspective as to what this nation was meant to be when it was founded by our founding fathers. And, and it wasn't just founded. They died and fought for this. I mean, they sacrificed everything uh, so that we could have freedom and liberty, so we could be a sovereign people. And yet we listen to the politics, and we, you know, I, I turned it off last night. I uh, We had watched uh, John Wayne movies, and and uh, then when one ended, we turned on the news, went to Fox, and, and there was uh, Trey Gowdy, and he was talking about this and that, and they're all talking about the memo and what's in it and what's not in it, and blah, 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 blah. And I just said, turn it off. I'm so sick of hearing him. And then he come in, you know, and I've got emails. And the Bundy trial, riddled with government corruption and legal advisors, pro, the legal advisors proclaim. And, of course, we know it's, it's filled with uh, uh, corruption. And these are the things that mainstream media or Fox are not talking about. And this is what is actually happening, happening to the sovereign people of this nation, like the Bundys, like the Hammonds, like the Hages, like all of those, you know, that are – that are just their lives are being ruined and tortured. They're being harassed by bureaucracy, uh, by people with agendas. Whether it's the the cake bakers or the florists, and you know, it, that's what really gets gets to me. We sit here and we chase all the politics, and it's their policies that are killing us. You know. You mentioned that uh, we don't hear any more about the sexual harassment. Well, a lot of it was phony, but some of it was real. And it got hushed-hushed all of a sudden. It was a big deal for, what, two months or more? And now you don't hear a word. Not one word. But, um, you know, it's... You know, so I get this article, and they're talking about the corruption and where it is. And, you know, that is locally as well as federal level. That is locally. So how important it is and uh, that you pay attention to who you elect locally. Presidents come, presidents go, Congress stays and stays and stays and plays and you pay. And if, you, if it's anything you can blame for the problems, it's who you voted in, and then they're stuck there. You're stuck with them. <laughs> you can't seem to get them out. And uh, – Anyway, that's, that's that's kind of what I have for the next thing because I, I we talk about the economy, we talk about the dollar, and it's losing its worth. And then we talk about the manipulation and the policies of what they're doing. They're just playing games, and while they're doing that, people's lives are being destroyed, like the Bundys and the Hages and the Hammonds and uh, the cake bakers and the. And, it's, and it just infuriates me because I worry about the American people being asleep. And- you know, here's something else that was really irritating that I saw this morning. This is why it got me. Stockton, California. Yeah, they're their own country anymore. You know, be, be done with it. But Stockton, they filed bankruptcy. In fact, they made, uh, when they filed bankruptcy, when their city filed, this is Stockton, California, when they filed bankruptcy, um, they came to where creditors on their pension funds got paid first. That's a big deal. And they set precedents on, on how a lot of these pension plans are going to be dealt with in the oh, future yeah. when these cities, they're going to introduce a universal basic income for mm. 2018. They're paying it now for $500 for one year. They're going to they're going to test it as a new way to sustain residents. 
Okay, I guess this economy is just flowing beautifully, isn't it? <laughs> that they have to pay $500 a month for people. And this is the, the Central Valley City that went bankrupt in 2012 and for decades has been trying to diversify its agriculture-based economy. It's next to Silicon Valley, and yet they have to pay $500? Yes. One and one well, they are the two. test tube. Uh, they are the test tube. I think they've been cloned too many times. We're going, we're finished for the day. I can hear the music. It's playing Freedom. We're free. The, the song is Free by Zach Brown Band. It's one of my favorites. We pretend to be free. Stand up and act like a free people who are sovereign. Thank you, Melody. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Alrighty. On Power Talk. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a Third Temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built, that's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.